we experience joyful freedom and we become more like Christ. But how do we, how do we do that? How do we achieve that? How do we become more like Christ? How do we experience that joyful freedom? There are so many, many ways to achieve that. But I, I, I chose to pick three ways. And one is, to, is by praying. And when I say praying, I don't mean just pray when you're going to your bed, pray when you're waking up, or when you wake up, mm -mm. pray constantly. Meet God constantly. Communicate with him. And the more we communicate with God, it's the more that freedom comes because he's giving us something that we need. He's telling us something that we need to hear. So um, just pray constantly. Constantly. It's not a, a you know, prayer when you feel like or prayer when you have a problem or situation. That's not how it works. It is a constant thing. When you are in trouble, when you are happy, when you have money, when you don't have money. When you are sick, when you are healthy, you, you're constantly praying. That's what God wants. And the, the, the second one is reading the word. You know, sometimes we, personally, sometimes I struggle to read the word as often as I should. That's simple. That, that, that is saying to me that I'm not maintaining my freedom. It's saying to me that I'm not guarding my freedom. And I'm not embracing it. Because if I was doing it, then trust me, I would be in my Bible morning, noon, and night. But I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> yes, because I realize that the more you read the word, is the more you want to read the word. The more you read the word, you can't get enough of flipping the other page. And that's the spirit of God. And that is freedom. And the next, the next one, the third one, I would I, I, I plan on doing only three. The next one is fasting. Consecration, it does a lot for your life, for your spiritual life. Because the when you fast, the more the the you 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 plan on doing one day. Or you're planning going up till three. But for some reason, and that reason is the spirit, you want to go to four, you want to go to five. Then the next day, you, you, you didn't plan on fasting the next day. But because of that spirit that you're pulling on, and the spirit that is in you, you want to go another day. And before you know it, you're going to go in three days. You're going to be doing all night. Who can go seven days? You go, I mean, fasting is just good. Because fasting is killing the flesh but and, and uh, building the spirit. I can tell you. So praying constantly, reading the word constantly fasting as often as you can is a way to freedom it's a way to 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 maintain your freedom it's a way to guard your freedom we're going to Luke 2 verses 1 to 7 and this is where Jesus was born as i read this i thought about we know we as Christians that we are to help each other. And looking at this situation, it was a time of the feast and everybody um, went to pay their, um, it, it was uh, the taxes. So I understand like if it was a Super Bowl thing, everybody, the, the place would be packed out. 
But I thought about it as I read about it. Uh, none of the people that they went to even considered the fact of, you know what, I have a room, you can use it. Or I don't live here, but I live there. You can, you know, I'll send you to my... Nobody even thought about that fact. Or even... Well, Mary or Joseph could have said, you know what, you know, Joseph, the man could have said, look, she carrying your savior. She needs a room. Fix it. But that didn't happen. She went, they found a place for her, a stable, places where they kept the animals. Then to top that off, he was placed in a manger, which is like a trough where they feed the animals from. That, like, humility. But the one thing that I got out of that was Mary was content. She and Joseph was content in the situation that they found themselves having to give birth to Jesus in this state. And finally, Luke 4, 1 to 13. And this is when, after Jesus was baptized, he was taken into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. And of course, Satan saw the opportunity. And of course, when we give him the open door, he's going to walk right in it. So he thought because of the weakened state that Jesus was in, that he would have been out of it and deranged or whatever. So he started to test Jesus. But Every time he came to Jesus, Jesus always took him to the word. It is written. It is written. It is written. So it is in the natural. So it is in the spirit. So we all know as Christians, we're going to be tested. So what's our response going to be? There we go. It is written. No matter what circumstance we are put in, and I'm really learning this <laughs> in a totally different way. No matter what circumstance we are put in, we're tested. In order to mo move on to another level, you're going to be tested. As children in school or even sometimes on our job, we get new things. We're tested. We're tested to see if we retain the things that we learned. We're tested in order to go to another level. We're tested to see if we can get that promotion or increase in our, or in our salary. We're tested. But as spiritual, as Christians in our walk, when we are tested, we should always kick back with the word to the enemy. A friend once said in um, a Bible study, when you squeeze the tube of toothpaste, you expect toothpaste to come out, right? When the enemy squeezes us, the word should come out. And that's all I have. And as I was driving in today, God spoke to me. And he said, tell them of my miracle working powers. Tell them that I can deliver them just like I delivered my children many, many years ago. You know, God specializes in whatever we're going through. And sometimes we can think that, oh, Lord, I'm going through this alone. Nobody ever been through what I'm going through. Nobody understands, but God understands. You know, the Lord reminded me of something that happened to me over 30 years ago. I had a brain tumor. I was not supposed to be standing here today, but because God specialized, because he was a great physician, because he knew my destiny, he had a plan. And his plan was that I wasn't going anywhere because I was going to do his will. When you walk in the will of God, there is nothing, nothing on this earth that he will not do for you. It doesn't matter if you got cancer or, or if, if the doctors gave up on you. 
The doctors gave up on you. God still has faith in you. And God wanted me to let you all know today that he's the same God that delivered sickness back then. And he's waiting with open arms to deliver all of us. No matter what we are going through. No matter how it may appear or how it may look. When you stand by faith and you stand on the word of God, he will walk you through that situation. I've been through some things in my life that most people that don't know God couldn't withstand. But because God allowed me to go through that, he broke me. He let me know that I got you. My hand is outstretched. Take my hand and walk with me. And when I took God's hand and walked with him, he changed my life. And he changed it for the better. For the better. If anybody asks me, would I want to be a minister? No. Would I want to walk and tell people God's word? No. But it wasn't up to me. God saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. God saw that I was going to touch lives. God saw that I would tell the people what thus said the Lord. And he reminded me that he gave up his son. That I could do just that. God wanted us to say yes to him. Lord, you take it. You handle it. God wants us to stand on his word. In my final closing remarks, God asked me the question, will you continue to trust me? Will you continue to look to me as your source? And I ask you today, will you continue to trust God? Will you continue to look to him as your source, your healer, your savior, the one who's going to defend you against all others because God specializes in giving us the best that he has. Well, God is saying, I'm tightening this up. Well, what God is saying in this season, we got to get out of bed. If you have been in, if Lisa, if you have been in ministry for 24 years and you're still at the resting place and you're still at the place that says, I rather rest than I rather get out the bed to come and commune with you, to consecrate with you, to exhort you, to magnify you, to lift you up, to give you glory. I'd rather go to bed. He said, okay, but I gave you the warning. He said, if you want to stay in Revelations, then stay in Revelations. But I gave Lisa says the warning. He said, listen, I'm giving you a chance to get this thing together. I'm giving you a chance to come forward. I'm giving you a chance to walk in my presence with me. I'm giving you a chance to exhort me with me. I'm giving you a chance to stand in my glory. With me, not behind me and not before me, but in my presence with me. God, listen, I've been telling everybody, if you don't understand the speech of what God is saying, you will be stuck, stagnant in that same place. Because where there used to be what God would say, hey, I'm coming soon, it changed. He said, Prepare yourselves. You got to understand that. See, he said before it was, 
I'm coming soon. I'll be here soon. Ten years went by. I'm coming soon. Twenty years went by. I'm coming soon. Thirty years went by. I'm coming soon. Forty years went by. I'm coming soon. It was 75 years. Then he said, prepare. What? They don't say the same thing. Because see, when it says I'm coming, that gives you time. I'm going to say that one more time. It says I'm coming gives you time. But when it says prepare, prepare means to get it in order right then and right there because I may be here tomorrow. I may be here in the next 10 minutes, but I am coming for sure. That's That's the difference. Because his speech changed. He didn't say, I'm coming soon. He said, prepare. I don't, I have to prepare now. Because see, I used to be like the five virgins. I said, I'm going to get that oil when I get it. Because he coming soon. But see, now. You got to understand where the one, see in Revelation, I'm going to go back. Because in Revelation, he said, I'm giving you the warning. I'm giving you time to get this thing together. I'm, I'm pointing out what the problem is. What church are you? If that's your problem, you need to get it together. If that's your thing, you need to pull it off. If that's what you got going on, repent. Then he said, okay, you don't want to do it that way? Guess what? Stop being like the woman. Stop getting in bed. Every time something seems like you can't go over it, you can't go under it, you can't go around it. And because you got to be like Paul and go through it. Yeah, I'm talking to me. I don't know about nobody else, but I'm talking to me. Because see, when things get hard for me, I don't want to go through that process. I don't want to put on the things that I have to put on. I don't want to be in the presence of God because that's what it requires. You got to get down on your knees. You got to go in your closet. You got to pray. You got to seek his face. You got to begin to pull off all those old things so you can reap the new things. And that's me. Because, see, I don't like for people to know that it requires something out of my life to be in the presence of God. I don't like for people to know that I have to be a leader. But in this time, I have to change. Because I can't go with He's coming soon anymore. Amen.